news. South Coast Tonight with Chris McCarthy and Marcus Farrow. They've got you covered on all the news of the day. From local issues to politics on both sides of the aisle. This is the place where the movers and shakers come to be heard. To listen. And where they're held accountable. This is South Coast Tonight on WBSM. So, Marcus, <clears throat> we've got a big hour right now. We're going to discuss what I think is a, <clears throat> I think you agree, a groundbreaking feud between city council member uh, Shane Burgo, who's in his first term. Yeah. And longtime mayor John Mitchell, who I think is in his 12th year. Yeah, he was elected in, what, 2011? I believe that's correct. Yeah. Um, so, John Mitchell, of course, is a, is a strong mayor, as the charter shows, not just in personality, but also in, in statute. Um, you know, that's the law, strong mayor. Uh, so, council. Mayor Menino of Boston, longtime mayor of Boston. Yes. Um, who, who, le- who, who stepped down from office and then died shortly thereafter? I think he, I mean, he knew... Yeah. Yeah, no, he he was dying of cancer. That's why he stepped out. I didn't know, actually. Yeah. I didn't know that. And I follow politics pretty pretty closely. Just when they get cancer, you usually write them off. Is that what it is, Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> you cruel bastard. <laughs> anyway. I like people who didn't get cancer. <laughs> All right, Trump. <laughs> Trump. Marcus John Trump. McCain. That so, was his real problem <laughs> with John uh, McCain. He, he got yeah, he, so. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you, if you if you ran a small clip of all Trump's most outrageous things, he wouldn't even be in the conversation anymore. Haven't they done that? Haven't they tried to do that? They've tried worse than They've that. Tried, yeah, yeah. They just can't nail the man. So moving us, yes. so moving, moving away from <laughs> Trump and under Burgo, another man who won't, won't won't accept election results. We have well, referendums show up. He wants to redo the four-year term. Okay, w- fair wants enough. Wants to do the CPA funding again. Well, well. So here's here's where I decided overwhelmingly. Yeah. So here's where I'm at. I, I've said this before. Uh, almost. I've said this repeatedly. Um, I think that the ballot questions. If you were to just propose the rent stabilization or rent control one, because you agree with it. Yeah, by okay. and large. Um, if they were to just propose that single question. Scratch a liberal, find a fascist. Go ahead. So so if you were to just propose that single, I think it's an idea worth exploring. So if you were to just propose that single ballot question, I think it would have a lot more meaningful impact. And I think well, it would true. be. That's true. I think it would be supported. I think the, the, the idea of it would be supported by the, you know, the very palpable and seemingly intractable uh, housing You're crisis. Sorry. The very uh, visible and seemingly unstoppable. I'm going to get you a, re- a reverse the source. <laughs> the very <laughs> palpable means you can feel it. Intractable <laughs> means Tell it us only, more, Mr. Professor. Intractable <laughs> means it only gets bigger. So uh, the... the <laughs> Tell us so, more, Mr. Professor. So so, so, so anyway, the backdrop of this, of this serious housing crisis that's afflicting New Bedford and everybody else in the country. But... Um, but uh, the problem is, is that, and 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 I, I do, I do believe Shane made some good points about talking to his residents about housing issues and how it's affecting them, and I believe that because we hear it from people in the audience. It's something that's, I think, borne out in statistics that housing that the that we're in a housing All you have crisis. To do is go on any apartment website. Yeah, and look, and, and you'll there, say, "What are you getting?" From and there's even and there's even data here, and there's even data on an article that Kate Robinson wrote on w, uh, wbsm.com that said, um, even in the North End area, which is the 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 uh, like the poorest area in the city, this this one specific neighborhood in the North End, rents have raised thirty three percent. So I think it's pretty clear that there is there is it's time to seize private private property. Yeah. So 
anyway, so here's here's where here's where I'm at. That's all. That's all. I think um, you know. Very good points to make for your arguments, and I think he did a good job of that. Where I got really disappointed is his work ethic. Where I got really disappointed was when he then then when Tim asked him about the Community Preservation Act question, because I've said before that this rent control question is watered down by the two silly questions that are next to it. Um, when he when Tim asked him about the CPA question, he then talked about how important the CPA was for housing and how he actually is he actually wants because there's earmarks you know there's certain percentages that have to be spent on uh, uh, historic preservation, housing, and uh, open spaces and recreation, and then there's another fifty percent of that pot that you can use on whatever you want. He wants that all to be used for housing. He talks about how important that money is for uh, to be to be directed into that housing into that uh, into that housing component of the CPA to fund to get more units online and the fact that CPA has right, funded but, right. a lot of units to get online. But then he says, but Linda Moore had got some phone calls. Right. So what am I going to do? Right. You know, this is a really important pro. This is a really important. I've heard from all my residents. The housing is a problem. I'm proposing this right. because I've heard from all my residents. Uh, I, I, this is so a doesn't very, that undermine his credibility? This is this is a very important pro. This is a this is a very important tool that we're going to use. This is the Community Preservation Act. I actually want more of it to be used for the thing that I'm advocating for. I don't want it to see it go. I haven't heard anybody tell me that they want to see it go. But I have to put the question on the ballot because Linda Morad got phone calls. So it's, it's absolutely a dereliction. Of, of as the your, mayor said, dereliction of duty. It's it's a dereliction of duty because because it's 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 totally based on the whimsy of one counselor, and you're just basically saying, "Well, I have to go along with it because she got phone calls." You don't have to do something because she's asking you so, to do it, Marcus. We we have the letter that he wrote to to the public and to the, I, was it addressed to the mayor or to the public in general? Um, I, I we have it at wbsm.com. But here's the thing. One of the very interesting. Well, well it was. I, I, it was. I mean, it was made public. Uh, right. So it's it's for everyone's consumption. Yeah. Yeah. He made it public. <clears throat> so, yeah. and we're gonna have the mayor on Wednesday, and and Tim will have him on Wednesday morning. So you're really gonna get a lot of the mayor this week. Um, so, Shane Burgo sent a long letter. Marcus, when he was here with us, the other week, he talked about the, war, the all the work he's done on housing. The one thing he left out of this letter is his claims that he negotiated with the mayor to get the funding f from ARPA for housing. That was his claim. We have it on, on tape. We can play it. We're not going to play it now. We'll play it when the mayor comes in. Because he insists that he negotiated with the mayor to get more funding for har for, from ARPA for housing. It's interesting because a negotiation is when one person disagrees with another, right? Um, yeah, I guess, I suppose. Well, Maybe. you're not negotiating with someone who agrees with you. Yeah. Right? Sure. I, I mean, I think we're, you know, we're, we're, we're putting emphasis on words that I don't know if he said negotiate or he said advocate Absolutely for. Absolutely used the word negotiate. I listened to it before I came tonight. Okay. So Shane Burgo said one of the things that took up all his time was the negotiations with the mayor on the ARPA funds. For, and he wanted more for housing. I haven't heard this recently. So he said negotiations with the mayor? Yes. Okay. So I know because when those conversations were going on, I was in regular conversations with then city council president, Ian Abram. So I know who was in the room. So I find it interesting that Shane Burgo, although he insisted on it here on the radio, and we have it in recordings, Neglected, neglected that very important detail in his letter when he made a written recollection of, of his work on housing and why the rent control question is so important and that he didn't like the tone and tenor of the mayor's response because it, it called into question their work ethic, their commitment to the process, and lectured to them. But I, I found it interesting, Marcus, that Councilor Burgo failed to put in writing his negotiations with the mayor on the ARPA funding for housing, I would think that, that Councilor Burgo would want to take credit for his work. So when Tim was asking him about that today, which is, again, recorded in a podcast, 
He again didn't really detail what he did in those negotiations. In fact, pointed to a letter from the United Faith Intercouncil Group, if I have that correct. It's, it's not a group. It's another group, not a city group. It's a private group that, negoti- that, w- that was asked for more housing funding. And God love them. But that's not Shane Burgo doing it. So I'm a little light on the details as to what he actually did that he claimed took up all his time with the ARPA funding negotiations with the mayor. Well, I think I think maybe part of it was that the ARPA the 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 meetings for the ARPA funding in and of itself. I think they probably had to have more than one committee on finance. There's probably more than one uh, per month like meeting on the ARPA negotiate uh, the ARPA funding and all that other stuff. There's probably a lot well, of work the, that the went mayor into doesn't that. Go to city council because it's meetings. because it's a because it's a sixty it's an allocation of sixty five million dollars. Totally understand. Yeah. I, I followed it very closely. That's why I wonder where these negotiations took place. Not in the committee meeting. I mean I think you're I think you're you're you're, you're very generous here. Where the city council and the mayor don't have committee meetings. No. If they did, there would be notes. I would have them. You yeah. would have them. I looked all through the notes of the meetings. Yeah. I can't find any. I don't know. I, I guess we'll have to ask Mayor Mitchell and uh, Councilor Burgo the next time we would talk to them. Would it surprise you if some people who I know were in the meeting say Councilor Burgo wasn't there? I. But it was very clear that he was there, though, right? I don't know. I haven't heard the... You're very the, charitable, Marcus. I haven't heard the interview in, in two, two three weeks. I, I haven't heard the interview. So. But you do remember him bringing up the ARPA funds. He did bring that up. He so did he bring that up. up. Yeah, he did bring that up. And that was one of the reasons he wasn't able to hold more housing committee meetings, because he was busy with the mayor and the ARPA discussions. That's specifically what he I told think, us. Yeah, I think, I think he phrased it in the way that the council was more... Uh, no, no, he said he was involved. Sure. Well, it's literally what he said. He was involved. But what, would that surprise you if he wasn't involved? Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, I, I haven't... Uh, we'll have well, to... No, if we saw, found out that he wasn't involved, that would surprise you because that's much different recollection than one he made on the air with us. Yeah, it would surprise me then. So that would be what? If he wasn't actually involved in those conversations. If no other party can remember a meeting that he was in. Would not be the truth. Someone's not telling the truth. So, but here's the thing. Again, I think... I just that... want to point out that that's where we're at. And I love it. I, I think that. Um, I think that. Here's the thing. I. I, I don't. People are getting real. I. Th- it, that's the thing. People are getting real. That's people sleep outside. Yeah. Someone slept outside last night because of the work or lack thereof. Yeah. I. I you, you know. I, probably a little bit. The issues are probably a little bit bigger than than that. Um, so. Uh, whether or not someone was in a meeting, I think, you know, again, housing's a big issue and that's going to take the some only time. Issue. Yeah, it's, it is the only issue. So here's the thing, you know, with the, with respect to this ballot question, uh, you know, I just want to go back to what... Do you think the city council will override the mayor's veto? veto? On what? On the, on the, on the, each one, let's go through each one. On the housing question, the rent control, I what think they call? will. So I'm counting votes. But I'm not privy to all the conversations, obviously. I think that it's going to be very close. Because remember, they need a super majority to override. That's very important. Mm-hmm. So they had a super majority to pass it. They did. So Council Oliver was the only one who voted no. Ian Abreu was unable to make it because they had the meeting despite the fact that his, his grandmother had died. Um, yeah, I... I so, I mean, you have they, Ian Abreu... I don't, think they, I don't think they were obligated to wait for him. No, 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 I'm just saying he yeah. wasn't able to vote on the question. And he had sure. a legitimate reason not to be there. Sure. It's not a, you know, I, I think it's important when... Because people do have questionable attendance and meetings, things like that. It's important when someone has a legitimate reason. Then we make sure it's on the record. Sure. So, in that case, I mean, his grandmother is dead. Sure. So, okay. so he so had Ian a legitimate there. reason not to make it. Yeah. So, if the mayor is able to switch all those votes... They had a supermajority going in. That's what we've come down to. Yeah, they have a super. They had a supermajority because it was nine to one. Ian said it would have been nine to two. Right now on the CPA question, um, it was seven to three. That's not a supermajority, or it might be. Is it a super? Is it? Here's the thing: I'm not sure of. Is it a supermajority of the body or a supermajority of the people who happened to, who were there to vote? 
Very interesting. I don't know, Marcus. Yeah, I don't either. So that, but but seven counselors isn't isn't a super majority uh, of the body. So if everybody's there, which they should be, um, then they'll. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, right. Which they should be, but um, the, then it'll be a seven to. Um, Ian doesn't have a second grandmother, does he? It'll God, be if she does, she better. You know, well, Ian is Ian is committed to. <laughs> Ian is committed to voting against all. Th- right. uh, <laughs> Ian is five hundred eight nine nine six Ian, zero five. Ian is committed to voting against all three yes. uh, uh, ballot questions, and so um, so the the CPA question. I think that one's going to fail the veto override because. Uh, Ian's committed to not vote. Uh, Ian's committed to voting against it because he understands that it's an important issue for housing. And he doesn't want to jeopardize it, and uh, he he. Uh, I think I think everybody's in pretty much agreement that um, Council President Morad is misrepresenting the CPA and how many phone calls she's getting about its repeal. Um, the um, uh, the uh, four year term, four year term. Uh, but but no, going back to the oh, CPA. Sorry. Uh, uh, Councillor Giesta said she's voting against the uh, CPA, uh, the veto override in the CPA, because right. there's a lot of work that goes into Ward Two. Um, Councillor Markey said he's voting against this, the uh, the CPA. Uh, Council Markey voted against it before he'll vote against it again because he's he's got a good head on his shoulders. Uh, Scott Lima, same thing. So they'll probably vote uh, against the veto override on the CPA because they understand it's a good program. They don't want to jeopardize it on the whimsy of one councillor, but. Um, so right now that that looks like that that majorities that that is not a veto proof majority so that is I don't think going to make it on the ballot. The 4 year term I think will make it on the ballot. So the uh, but the dynamics are different than voting for the ballot question. Now you're voting against the mayor. Yeah. So the politics are, are changed significantly. Well what's interesting is while uh Councilor Giesta voted to override, uh, while Council GSA voted f- uh, for, to put the four-year term on the ballot, she said she's going to vote against the veto override. The politics have shifted dramatically. I agree. We'll be right back. 508 996 That's how you can join the program. Oh, no. So, Marcus, um, so we were talking about the uh, city council's feud with the mayor over these ballot questions. Again, I do think that the conversations on housing are important. They're worth having. No doubt uh, about it. And I actually do uh, think that this, this the rent control, rent stabilization question has gotten people talking in a way that they weren't before. Um, well, there were no meetings before. I, I think that's, well, the, you know, there's, there's again, there was stuff that was happening for sure. I covered the first, I covered the home group. Uh, I covered their very first meeting. I actually wrote the first piece of media on the home group, um, and I think that's a really good organization. They've got the uh, they've got the the Department of Housing and Urban Development. I'm going to be at that meeting too in a, in a couple of weeks in in uh, April, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, seeing what they what they have in store. But um, I think going forward, but they don't have the full impact of a legal body, legally elected. And, body. and I think what and I think that uh, and I think that what can happen now. Is you can just go forward and start, you know, and start working on this, trying to create a, a, a sound, a public sounding board for the rent control, rent stabilization, a public sounding board for some of the issues. Like the, I, I actually thought the the plan by the the motion proposed by Councillor uh, Abreu for the uh, the nursing homes um, to be repurposed into housing. The, the those three barren nursing homes after t- then Attorney General Healy shut them down, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think repurposing them into housing, I think, is a great idea. So I think that you know working on that's going that was referred to Burgos Committee. So we're going to actually start seeing um, those. Uh, we're we're going to start seeing some of that stuff happening in the, the in the Committee on uh, uh, Affordable Housing and Homeless Affairs. So that's what you can do going forward now is start to take this momentum that you're trying to build and, and put it into public conversation and get that going. I, I, I think I think there's a real opportunity here. But again, if it's going to be bogged down by those two inane other questions, then you just look like you're not doing your job and well, asking people a bunch of stuff. So the ballot, being in favor of the ballot questions, right, whatever they are, um, all three of the questions or, or individual and none of the questions was a different conversation. Now, that the mayor has vetoed them. It's now 
you're either with the mayor or against the mayor on each individual question. Mm -hmm. And I did think that Councilor Burgo did a very good job in explaining uh, his position. Okay. Yeah, he did a great job. Uh, but, we're going to go to the phones. By the way, if you want to call us, it's 508-996-0500. So the political dynamics have certainly changed. Sure. Before the question, it's kind of interesting. Councilor Burgo, you know, he admitted to us. He didn't want to hear the mayor say no, so he didn't tell him. Uh, I think the same question or same situation is what was with, with Linda Morad. She just sprung them on the mayor. Yeah. Sprung them on, maybe sprung them on a colleagues because I can't find any conversations. I thought Jack Blaine, when he was with Tim today, made a lot of really good points about the city council and the way they're operating. And uh, I think people really, Jack's been observing the city council and the, and the mayor for years. And he's got some really, and again, he's a city taxpayer. He's got some real insight into what's going on here because of the, the longevity of, of his observations. So, um, the fact that they just sprung this on the mayor, you know, and of course the mayor is going to be outraged. It's yeah. not really, how, as he pointed out in his letter, it's not really how the government works. The city council makes policy, no doubt about it, but the administration has to administer yeah. the policy changes. So we're going to be here now. Let's go to the phones. Thanks a lot for calling. You're live on WBSM. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, my friend. How are yeah, you? Yeah, my friend. How are you doing? Good, good. good. I want to congratulate you guys both for last Friday's program with uh, Mayor Lang on the program. Thank okay. you. That was great. Certainly he gives a different view of this than uh, our present mayor does. Yes. He sees no problem, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, with having these uh, non-binding uh, you know, questions on there. Uh, he, like me, and again, he's got a lot more weight than me because he did the job. He feels that two years were enough. Okay, for a mayor, and I, I feel that if if you work hard and you have the power of incumbency, uh, there's no need for four years. Okay, uh, I, I think he expresses that probably better than I do. Uh, I think he also mentioned too that when they did have the vote on that uh, to change it, uh, the the vote was kind of close, and I don't know what the vote was, but that's what he said. It was close. It I remember him saying that. I don't know if that's actually the proper recollection of it. I think that the four-year term passed it over 50% of the vote, but maybe around 56 to 40-something. I well, forget. Well, again, the I don't know. I don't have access to that. I'll, I'll, I'll take Mayor Lang at his word. Yeah. The other thing I was very uh, uh, struck by was that your friend, and I think he's my friend too, although I don't know him, Mark Montigny, sure, uh, you know, said to the mayor that he was, Mayor Lang, that he was a great mayor, okay, a yes. great mayor. And uh, I don't think, uh, said it to Montigny, and he wouldn't say, but I don't think he feels the same way about John Mitchell. So, And, I, and I, one of the reasons yeah. I would give is, uh, I was watching uh, the other night, uh, on TV, and they were opening up a new store in the West End, and uh, Mayor Mitchell was there, and Tony Cabral was there in the background. And I was surprised because he called Tony his friend, all right? And he gave him, you know, uh, due, you know, chance to speak and everything, and take also uh, some sort of, um, you know, uh, accolades for having this person open the store. Now, Mark Montigny kept single handedly, I would say, UMass Dartmouth and uh, UMass New Bedford. Sure. And I would yeah. have thought, and maybe I didn't hear it, Chris, maybe you did, that Mayor Mitchell would have, uh, you know, said to uh, Senator Montigny, uh, thanks, because that's one of the pieces that helped keep uh, the uh, downtown together. I didn't hear anything, okay? Uh, so I don't think there's very good feelings between those two gentlemen. Well, I will, I will say this. You I, know more than I, I, I have a lot of personal conversations with Mark. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're, we're very close friends. And um, I would make no, no, no bones yeah, about that, yeah. but neither would he. But um, I've had a lot of personal conversations. I will tell you, without, I don't think it's violating my confidence in him, with him when, when I say that he always refers to John Mitchell as his friend. There's oh, certainly okay. tensions there. But oh, I, yeah. I, think, I think Mark really, you know, has admiration for the mayor, they, but they certainly have tension. They have matching bracelets. Well, Chris, let me, let me put this to you. <laughs> if I were mayor, and I think if you were mayor, and uh, Senator Montigny uh, really worked as hard as he did to keep you Mass Dartmouth in New Bedford downtown, uh, don't you think you'd hear something? I would have. I would, I would certainly, you, yes. know, you know, 
credit him, you know. Uh, that doesn't yeah, happen. have even, to, because that's the, the history. Yeah. It was handled about the state peer from listening to Senator Montaigne talk about it. Hey, look, I want what he wants down there on the state pier. Right. And maybe even though I don't deserve the legal right to hear about this in the negotiations, I wrote that legislation. That's basically what I thought I heard him that's say. That's exactly what happened. And again, if that's the case, you would think, hey, look, um, Senator Mark, I don't have to pick up the phone and call you, but I am going to let you know that this and this and this is being proposed. And thank you very much for your part in doing this. You don't get that out of my way or the highway. OK, you don't. And that's that's part of the problem there. You know, uh, again, I just want to go back to uh, uh, Mia Lang. Yeah, I, I thought he ex- explained a feeling that is closer to mine about the way the city should go. Even he didn't talk about it this time, but the view of the, the port and maybe the windmills not working and everything like that. Uh, maybe fusion taking over. Uh, today, technology is happening, happening so fast that even though, uh, you know, former Mayor Bullard or Mayor Bullard had mentioned that, hey, that's been forever. But, you know, the way things are going now, uh, like Roosevelt said, my left, my left hand know what my right hand's doing. Right. Maybe there should be a contingency plan down there that if windmills don't go through, maybe there should be some area there that we keep quiet about that fusion might be able to go into. So, you know, we keep the power coming, you know. So uh, I, I think that there's a lot of problems with wind, um, mm-hmm. potential problems. We're seeing them now yep. with the um, with the animals that are dying, the, mm-hmm. the dolphins, the, the whales. <clears throat> now, look, I, I'm not going to make any friends here but by saying this, but I'm not a big believer in wind, but, but I know the wind blows, yep. and I know that windmills do work. I know that mm-hmm. I don't know what the electricity is going to cost. Mm-hmm. But dolphins or whales are, are really fun. They're great to go on a walk, you know, you can go on a whale watch in the eighth grade. That's sure. fun. But... Yeah. The reality of it is that those animals cannot stand in the way of progress, mm-hmm. and it would be—it's really sad if they're dying. We got to try to figure out a way not well, to again, have yeah. them die. I, I but, think it could change drastically, and I'm not saying Mayor Bullard is wrong. They've been after fusion for years, right. But the way technology is changing so rapidly, things—it's uh, hard to keep up with it. That could happen, and you should have somebody in the bullpen that's able to say, "Okay, we can adapt to fusion too if it comes in." Sure. I, I maybe you might want to, want to say that to the windmill people, but like Franklin Roosevelt said in his politics. I never let my left hand know what my right man's hand's doing. That way he could play both sides and, and come out looking like a winner, And whether it's Mitchell or whoever they are. The other thing I will say is, too, sure. uh, the, the barbarians aren't at the gate uh, with, with these... Uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, referendums. Uh, they're no, they're in the, no, 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 no. They're not at the gate. They're in the horse. They're inside the horse. <laughs> well, well, no, I, I'm, I'm, t- I'm telling you, that's what that's the CPA question. That's Council President Morad building momentum I, I to try to kill with, it. I, I it's, agree it's with not. You. It's politics. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay, but it's it's, but, but it's again, bad this politics. Is, this is a long way off yet. Okay, so uh, like Neil Lang said, way let's let the, the people let them test the temperature of the people. It doesn't mean anything unless you have a binding referendum and you you got to have the, but, the, the you know the uh, the state. But if you have somebody in a position of power, the second most powerful person in the city government purposefully misleading people on a particular He's policy a guy. and then putting oh, oh, it you're talking about Linda Morad and Linda Morad oh, that's, that's Pur- a purpose long, a long battle purposefully yeah but but that's not that's it's not it's not something we can we can just yeah. excuse away you've got a policy that works really well, well you've again, got a you've got a you've got a person who's the second leading uh the second most powerful person in the city government putting something on the ballot despite the fact saying that she got phone calls that nobody else in the yeah, council got of, and then you've got hold on one second feelings. and then you've got and then you've got that same person, you've got that same person saying, oh. Uh, sorry, I just dropped your call. I'm sorry. Listen, um, call, call back. Um, Can you call back? I just dropped the call. Yeah, we dropped it. Um, it's, it I'm, I'm about, <laughs> I did it. Yeah. I, I, I dropped the call. So <laughs> That was my fault. We're, we're working in, in, I didn't in, mean a, to in do a it. different way than we are. No, but, no just but, call. He's listening. Call back. Yeah, but the point I'm trying to make is you've got you've got somebody in that position of power misleading the and we've already and I've already talked about how it's misleading how these things that she said were not factual about the Community Preservation Act and then putting it on the ballot. It's just a way to kill momentum. So it's not like oh well you know it's not not binding whatever. No, she's trying to build five momentum. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. We're going to. Um, 
There you go. There we go. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. I see you folks on hold. We do have to take a very quick break. Yeah. Uh, we'll be right back. If you're on hold, if you just call back, I appreciate it. We'll be right with you. And if Marcus hangs up, call back again. Yeah. All right. Stick Sorry. around. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You listen to South Coast tonight with Marcus and Chris. Fourteen twenty WBSM can now be heard on ninety nine five FM. Wonder. WBSM isn't just a broadcast; it's also a podcast. Get all of our podcasts at wbsm.com, the WBSM app, or just search WBSM on your favorite podcast provider. Welcome back to South Coast Tonight. I'm Chris McCarthy, and Marcus Farrow is here as always, holding down the fort. We're going to go right back to the phones. I believe we have our caller who called back. Hey. Yeah, I'm one of the voices in the night, and I'm back. <laughs> All right. Thank you so I much. I the voices, too. Thank you. So continue with Sorry. your point, please. Okay. Well, I, again... Uh, I go back to, you know, Mayor Lang uh, mentioning also as well that, you know, he feels that there's a, a, a try and with this, I guess, rent stabilization thing, an effort to try to gentrify uh, the city. Uh, I don't hear too many people talk about that. And if they do gentrify the city, it means that a lot of the people that are in the city right now, I don't know where they're going to go. Yeah. Uh, so he seems to understand that and brings that up as well. Yeah. So, again... Uh, Mr. Burgo, Council Burgo, I think uh, has all the right intentions. Sure. But basically, yes. Council Burgo against John Mitchell is like David against Goliath, and John Mitchell is Goliath. Now, you guys both know. Well, David, David I know my Bible, so I think he's more David, of, really. Of, of, da da David won. John Mitchell is Scott Lang. Whether or not he wants to do it or not, I realize he's got a business to run and all right. that sort of stuff. But there are two opposing views about what the city should be like. I know you respect both men. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, uh, Marcus, if you were showing a little partiality when you said the former and future, uh, <laughs> future mayor of the city of New Bedford. But nonetheless... I just, Marcus knows give, what he's saying. That, I, <laughs> that would, well, he's a litigator. That would give the voters in New Bedford a true choice as to who they want. I know in the past, when uh, Mayor Lang uh, didn't run, uh, Mayor Mitchell was asked about it, and if I can remember correctly, he said he didn't run because he knew he wasn't going to win. Okay. So, you know, uh, that would, there's no one else that's going to be uh, Mayor Mitchell. He, he, uh, whether I agree with him or disagree with him, he works hard yes. and he outworks everybody else. And that's why we're in the, you know, the, they get the situation they do. The other thing that upsets me, uh, put that aside, is uh, Linda Morad, when she got through, through talking, I paid my water bill today. I think it was about $33. Yeah. Okay. And she said, oh, by the way, uh, next uh, year you're going to see a big increase in your water bill. Well, that's because you guys didn't write a grant. Right. Yeah. You, know, you talk about a, a, a dereliction of duty. You know, you, I'm sure that if this city, who's ever supposed to start it, whether it be the mayor or the city council, I really don't know. Uh, uh, I'm sure the city would have been in good stead to get you know uh, some help with this because we, mm -hmm. we're not a rich uh, city as far as median uh, salaries and stuff like that. And they dropped the ball there. That's what I'm worried more about than all the referendums of the world. You know that that are non-binding. So I'll let you guys talk. I've hey, talked enough. Thanks. Th thanks for the call. Appreciate, we it. appreciate One other it. thing. Yeah. Where's Tom Kennedy on this? He's, he's right. A, he's he's coming up next. Like I think he's coming up next. You think he's coming oh, up good. next? I hope he is. All right. All right. So, um, Marcus, the, uh, the, the caller's point is my point, which is that these ballot referendums aren't that significant. They're, they're not that productive, really. They're non-binding. Well, and so anyone who needs the, whole housing right now is going to it's, it's just, just it's just a cruel hoax. The, question, the questions themselves represent, like Mitchell said, a fundamental change in government. So they can be significant in that they build momentum towards a specific issue. But at the same time, again, if you just throw stuff on the ballot and ask people a bunch of stuff, it does look like you're not doing your job. Well, because you're not, they're not. They're right. not doing their job. Yeah, How do correct. you bring forward these questions, binding or not binding, should have been brought forward months ago in the committee process. Yeah, I agree. Because they knew the mayor wasn't going to agree with them, 
They just tried to, I don't know what, sneak Again, it forward. I, it's weird. I think you can make the case on the on the rent control question, um, just on the urgency of the housing situation. Yeah, but, but this doesn't do anything. So, so when you say urgency, yeah, Marcus, you, 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 and I know that you like rent control and uh, rent stabilization. I get it. But, and that, that's fine. It's certainly a legitimate position. It's, you know, um, but there's no urgency. Here. Yeah, I, I think There's that, an urgency of people who need housing. But this question doesn't do anything. You know, here's the thing. I think that um, what would probably be a better course of action is to, if you, if it's a policy you believe in, to start to start actually codif- trying to codify something. Start the work. You need a long run. And, and here's the thing: this, you need a long this, the, if you if you get this passed, if you get it over Mitchell's signature, which you need for a home petition, let's say you get all that, um, it's DOA in the house. But that doesn't mean. That doesn't mean it's not something worth pursuing because you want to get it on the record. Right. But you still gotta do you still gotta you still gotta do the thing. Fifteen months, less than three hours worth of meetings. It's atrocious. Well, I think again, I think there's an opportunity um to to, to, to lead. Well, I think but unfortunately there's no opportunity to go back in time. The you time can only has go been fo- squandered. Exactly. You can only go forward. Right. The time has been squandered. You can only go forward. You know people by their work. You know them by the fruit of their work. That's that's the truth. So listen, Marcus, I think we have to take a quick break and we'll be back. We'll go right back to the phones. We see you on hold. 508 996 500 Stick around, we'll be right back. You shouldn't. And welcome back to South Coast Tonight. I'm Chris McCarthy. As always, Marcus Farrow is here with me, holding the fort down. Um, 508-996-0500. We have someone waiting a long time. We're going to go right to the phones. Good morning. Thanks for holding. Good evening, rather. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you doing? Hey, Tom. What's up? uh, It's the, uh, to override the veto, it's two-thirds of the elected body, which would be eight votes. Okay, so Uh, it's not two-thirds of the people that are there at the time. Correct. So great. Eight, eight votes are required. It's good to know. That's, That's why it's great to have Tom in the audience and a participant. Yeah. The other one is uh, I gotta believe that that this whole thing with the CPA thing out uh, of Council of Morad is positioning itself for a run for mayor. I, I I gotta believe also when this thing first came out, there was a a provision in there allowing for a borrowing uh, from that particular entity uh, up to a certain capped number. Uh, and maybe that hasn't happened yet, and maybe she got wind that that is going to happen, and she would utilize that down the road. Um, the other conversations, uh, people have to understand uh, a Massachusetts senator is a lot different than a, a mayor. Uh, there's going to be friction naturally, uh, and I, I, I think both Senator Montigny and uh, Mayor Mitchell get along just fine. I don't think there's any animosity there. Right. whatsoever and there's no sense trying to create it and if we listen to both both uh people that there's some sense it'd be good for our program <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to choose sides. i noticed that with you guys <laughs> but uh it's always about uh, what's good for the show everything else is secondary everything, everything is secondary. the show is the mastered show. to yes. everything in my life right now yeah, what i really <laughs> enjoyed though was senator montigny uh regarding the the, the mass development issue you know, and him talking about the legislation that he wrote regarding it. And there was a certain, uh, uh, I don't know, absolute professional, let's not get out of the track here. We're all in this together. You know, here it is. He did that. We did this. And he was trying to bring people together just just by his conversation. I, I thought that was a wonderful thing. That's the nature of being a legislator, right? I mean, you've, that, got, you've right. got to build coalitions, even with people you disagree with on, 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 on a different issue. You've got to that, that, people everyone together. Yeah, that was, it was terrific. And, and uh, even, even the, the other representatives regarding this issue, they, they, they were professional all the way down. Yeah. Maybe not so much the, the guy uh, in, uh, the, that's in charge of the, the transportation. I forget his name already. Bill Strauss. Oh, yeah. Who? Strauss. Strauss. Strauss, yeah. He, he was a little bit uh, 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 crash, I guess, with his response. But, uh, I mean, the idea here is we're all in this together. Uh, uh, I think the mayor has the, uh, the, the city uh, uh, in goodwill and is trying to do what he can do with what he's got. I think he's been a good mayor. 
I, I think he deserves another four years. Uh, I think that's worked out well. Um, and you may not ag- agree with him. And that brings me to the final point. Sure. You know, in my theological studies, we, we had uh, a chance to go over what happens in a synagogue. And in a synagogue, you know, it, it's designed so that there's people on one side and people on the other. And if you had an issue, you'd go in there and talk about it. It's central uh, to the Jewish faith. And, but you've got to be prepared. You know, even when yes, Jesus walked yes. into the synagogue, he was prepared. And what's happened uh, in this scenario, the mayor shamed the city council because they weren't prepared. Right. And now they're all up in arms about it. It's crazy. <laughs> have the argument. Have the discussion. Have the debate in the council. That's central to our city. And these are our city fathers. And I haven't seen any of that. It's, it's stunning to me. You know, well, Tom, it's, it's little quips and if, stuff like if that. If they had work to point to, they would point to it. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, they're not doing committee work the way you guys did when you were on the council. They're just not. And if they were, there would be a record of it. So as a member of the journalism community, when I go to look for past records and they don't exist, or if they exist, they're very minuscule, that, point, that, that says to me, you're not doing the work. I mean, this is politics. You've got to build a record. Just because you did the work, but you didn't get a record for it. I mean, that's really, really irresponsible to say that, well, I did it, but there's no record of it. I mean, I mean, what the hell are they talking about? It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's bad. bad. I know when I first, I mean, in the first week, I was fortunate. Uh, my uncle, Eddie Wilkes, was uh, chief of staff for Mayor Maki, and he pulled me aside. He said, look, you get a hold of that charter, and you read that, right. and you understand that everything goes through the mayor's office. You have your position, say whatever you want, Tommy, but do the work. And I was like, wow, and I did that. And then w- when I got done the work, you know, I got pointed to the city solicitor's office. This is a simple thing on, on shelf, it's regulations, but it was a lot of work. You know, right. you're talking months, and then it had to be cleared there. Now, the mayor wouldn't stop that, but he saw the work. And it got passed, and I think those regulations are still in effect today up until the time they get rid of the selfish committee. But uh, it's, it's process, and, yes. and it is work. And, and, and you have to be interested in it in, in the sense of not these little flippant things that right. come out. Anybody can make a wise crack. Anybody. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it takes thing. hours in these committee meetings. Take a look. Be, pay attention to bumper stickers. I saw one today. <laughs> What's that? White letters. Red stripes would have said, vote the slate. Ooh, something's brewing. You think here? I think here. This is in New Bedford. Something's hmm. brewing. So that, that was interesting to me. I today. love that observation. Yeah, we'll that's keep pretty cool. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, take thanks, care. my friend. Have a good night. Yep. God bless. Marks, we'll take a quick break. We'll Do we right have back. any left? Oh, I don't Does it say spot block? It does. No, we don't have any left. Wow, we burned through all the commercials already. Yeah, we we yeah we we don't have any left. I thought I thought that Tom had just perfect timing. No, no, he needs better timing. We used three. We had three. We had three breaks. So five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. So again, I know I keep pointing to this, but I guess it's because when I was in local government, I know we did a lot of work, and I I respect people who are in elected office. And I know how much work it takes to move something forward. Mm. So if you're not doing the work and you just come to the end of the line and, you, and you're looking for something to do, something to make it look like you did work, well. so you come with a ballot question. They're both per, they're all provocative questions. But Marcus, through the CPA, because you and I agree on this one, the CPA has been coming up year after year for city council approval. Yeah. There's nothing on the record. That they approved, that they disapproved of any project, even resisted them. Yeah, no. Even asked questions. There's nothing to li- to, to very little. And now they say, "Bless the public." Don't Here's the, the thing. question. Of. This it's is obnoxious. The, this is the most egregious part. They didn't say anything. One counselor said it, and they just blithely. They voted yeah, they just very casually just said. No, oh, yeah. Well, you got a phone call. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's vote. It's it's so so to, so. It's, and now it's, they're saying it is that's obnoxious. Now they're saying we don't like the mayor's response. How about the way you treated the mayor? 
Yeah. You didn't talk to him about it. You had no committee meeting. Yeah. You just threw it on the ballot. I know. If I talked to a former counselor about this, uh, by the, and, and they said they actually, when the CPA was going on, went door to door and and, and, uh, and knocked doors for for it with with friends of theirs. Like there was a legitimate campaign for that. And there these and the, these counselors that voted with. Uh, count the council president are willing to completely ruin all of that well, work. They have an opportunity to on reverse, nothing. They have an to opportunity to reverse their mistake. Yep, it's very few times in life you get a, you get a do over. You get a they're, mulligan. They're getting a do over because because it, if you're serious about housing reform and you also just you put a major tool for housing reform in serious jeopardy based on. Absolutely no evidence that your constituents are against it. Or, Marcus, or let's and, let's assume that there is this, this groundswell out there to get rid of the CPA. Why is there nothing in the committees? Even even if there... Let's say... Okay, let's say there is a groundswell. Right. Why isn't there... A, why is it... Because it doesn't exist. Because it's because it's fake. So, um, so now that the mayor vetoed it, if you're really in favor of repealing it or having a ballot referendum, have a committee hearing. Yeah. Get some evidence on the record, but the fact well, is, they can't produce well, it. Well, because because there is no evidence, because most most of us are, are dubious of the fact that Council President Moore got a single phone call about the CPA because not none of the other councilors did. And Councilor Burgo, um, disappointingly, I like I said, I agree with Council Burgo on a lot. Uh, I always uh, I always like to hi- I, I like to have him on the program to talk about some of the issues you know that 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 he sees in the city, but disappointingly. Is is going going along with what Council President Morad said, despite the fact that he says he hasn't received any of those phone calls, and despite the fact that he's also said on this program he doesn't think most of the people or any of the people are against the CPA. So that's that's it's really disappointing to me that they would that 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 he would and the other councils would again casually vote against the Community Marcus, Preservation Act. It, I don't it just doesn't make any sense. Why Council of Burgo? didn't simply make a motion to refer the CPA question to his housing and, and, committee. And listen, I don't... To his housing committee. He, he should have. Hold a hearing on He, he should have. And, well, uh, they, they should have just voted this. Uh, they shouldn't even done that. They should have just said, no, nah, screw this. Um, and I'm not, I don't want to single him well, out because... Well, legislatively, holding a committee hearing is not a bad thing. Yeah, good point. It's like uh, the, the... It's called the state, process. In the state house, you uh, put it to a study, right? right? But, but what I'm trying to say is, um, uh, even with... Um, like it, he's not the only one. He's just the one who's spoken about it recently, right? So you know, let's let's not absolve the other counselors who said they're for the CPA, but against there's there's a few others. Council Pereira, right, well, is one Burgo of them as well. Has a chance to 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 correct his error. Well, they all do, right? They all do, and you and you hope that they you you hope that they do because again, you know, here's the thing: even if there was a groundswell against the CPA, and you know in your heart that it's a good program and it's the right policy, well, then, you should just let it continue anyway. You should you should be sticking well, up for that issue and die on that as hill. As John, well, as John Mitchell pointed out, it's not your job to poll the voters; it's your job to represent them. That's what I'm saying. Use what, your mind. What you should do is say. But no, this is a good program. Let me explain why. Right, and Use you stand up for the things you argument. you stand up for the things you believe in. Not say, "Well, my colleague got some phone calls, so I'm going to throw this on the right. ballot." We're coming to an end. Yeah, all right. So, folks, um, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. All the, all you people who made it, who called in, those who couldn't get on, gone, and we appreciate it. Um, you can download the podcast if you missed any of this. We'll have the mayor on Wednesday. What do you got tomorrow, Marcus? Tomorrow we got two school committee members.